there's probably about 40, 50 cars there. What? Wow, we. Wow, that's a heck of a barn. Well, I got to peek inside the window. Okay, I see. Yeah, there's, there's a car, there's a car. Yep. Hello. How you doing? Tom Carter, how are you? Okay. What's your name? Tony Marino. Tony. Hi, Tom. How Kim. are you? How nice are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. This is my father's uh, childhood friend, so he wow. knows a little bit more about the cause than I do. We're a long way from Marine Park, Brooklyn, I'll tell you that. Kim, thanks for driving all the way out here today. Nice to meet you, Tom. And like you said, we'd never find the place. We did, but wow, this is in the middle of nowhere. How long ago did he build this? This was built, uh, I want to say, in 2000. He bought the property in late 90s, and he built this in 2000. So how much property is here? There's uh, 10 acres, or well, 10.2 acres altogether. Mm -hmm. And left you everything that's in this barn. Yeah, there's three of us, there's three sisters, and uh, so we don't know what the future is gonna be with the property, but yeah, so he left us some treasures. Yeah, would you show us? Yes, absolutely. Ooh, man. Let me open the door. Wow, wow, wow. It's a little tight squeeze. So we have a, a kind of a perfect combination here. Kim is here to tell us about maybe personal stories about the car and her father. And her father's best friend, Tony, has got you know, I went with him to pick up that car. This is where we got it, so the more technical side of it. So this, this is like a perfect combination. I already know what this car is, so I'm not gonna guess what it is. I know it's a Camaro, but tell us about, and would you mind if I uncover it? Please. All right, so tell us about this Camaro. So, Daddy uh, heard that there was this car in Daytona Beach, and he went to take a look, and it looks like it was something he wanted, so he asked around, and it wound up being a pace car. He purchased it, it's got very low miles, and uh, pretty much the only person he mentioned in his will was my son, and this was gifted to my son. Isn't it? So, cool? yeah. So I'm gonna check what the mileage is here. Oh, wow, there's a lot of zeros there. 437 miles from new. Tony, did you go with him to pick this up? No, no, I didn't go with him. I guess he never drove it, right? No, he... has got no miles, this car. So right. Frank, number 42. Yeah, so this was um, when my father passed. He had so many vehicles. So what we did was we did a chart, and we did, like, a lottery. And we all just picked what you cars... You and went, Me and my two sisters, yes. So it was not, I want that, that, that. It was... No, it was your geez. turn, your turn, your turn. No, yeah, that's how we did it, yeah. Gave everybody a fair shot. No kidding. So, yeah. Your dad was a caddy guy, you told me, right? Yes. Like me. <laughs> oh, you're a caddy guy, too? Yeah. So, this Take is, a guess, Tom. No, I know it's a caddy. I can see the, the headlight. But? But, oh, I don't know. Besides that, um, well, I can tell you. Let's see. It's convertible. Uh, you know, I'm not good on caddy years. It's probably like a 70, 72... What do, what, do, what do you think it is? Tony, what is it? Well, yeah, yeah, let's, let's I haven't unfold seen this car in years. So is this like original paint kind of thing? No, I don't think so. I think you... Uh, it looks beautiful, I'll tell you yeah. that. All right, so this is a perfect Brooklyn car. You touch on my no, car, I, I break think, your I face. I think this is original paint job. It is, I think I'm it is. I'm not mistaken. Man. This is amazing. He's got the original book. And it's a, you want to take a guess, Tom? What year? 1967. 67, okay, huh. And it's got 62,000 miles on it. I guess, I, I bet this is all original. It's good, so it's got teal body, teal interior seats, teal uh, carpeting. This, wow. So this is, whose car is this? It's yours. Mine. If I wanted to buy this, would you sell it to me? Probably, yes. Really? Yeah. You know? Yep. I've never owned a caddy, but I kind of dig it. This one's a nice one. 
How did he usually buy cars? I mean, he was a landscaper. Did he go to Science people's yards? Yes. Yeah, so, so his landscaping business was predominantly in Manhattan Beach, Bergen Beach, Mill Basin in Brooklyn. And usually it would be the people come to him and say, my, my wife just had a heart attack and she can't drive the car anymore. Do you know anybody that may want to buy it? And he would grab it. Um, a lot of people, their parents passed. Frank, we have this car in the garage for 30 years. Do you want it? Like that. And that's how, and Tony would say, oh, I got a guy. <laughs> I got a guy. <laughs> Jeez. So here's a 50, I think, I'm guessing a 57 Oldsmobile. Regina? That's R my oldest sister, yes. R-E-G, yeah, okay. So this is a, 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 a four-door pillowless sedan. Look at this chrome trim, just right down here. So you roll down the windows and there, it was, there was no post. So a pretty sexy four-door. And what a dashboard. You remember we found the Oldsmobile uh, convertible on Barn Fine Hunter in Traverse City, Michigan. It was a convertible version of this, but that dashboard, there it is. Fabulous, like spaceship. Wow. There was you know, something... I think these are all original cars. I don't think they've been repainted. Yeah, he did like the originals. Uh, yeah. The only one that he re redid to original uh, was my Mustang. That Mustang was brought back to life. That was okay, all... Okay, the one in your driveway. Yes. Yeah. But dad, which people would go crazy. Why are you getting four doors? Why don't you get two doors? The value is so much better. And my father couldn't stand having to move the seat and get people in the back. Yeah, I get it. And he was like, it's four door all the way for him. I'm gonna open the hood in this because some of these had three carburetors in the front seat. Yep. Might have three carbs. I would have never found that, Tom. I'm, I'm surprised <laughs> I did. So it looks like it's got one carburetor. It's a rocket, old rocket 88 motor. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm going to take this off and see. See, I did the air conditioning years ago. Yeah, <laughs> Copper. <laughs> Big refrigerator unit here. Well, that's, yeah, one four barrel carb. Look how clean this engine compartment is. I mean, jeez, that is amazing. Tony. This car, 53? He, he, he bought it from a fellow. Sight unseen from Ohio. So this is a two-door hardtop. top. 56. Two-door hardtop. What was really cool is, take a look at this over here. So rain wouldn't come in the car. They had this like piece of trim on here. You could put the window down and rain would stay off. To open the door, watch this piece of trim. It goes up and then it goes down again. So many details were built into these cars. So this car is a light yellow with dark green interior. What a beautiful combination. Matter of fact, the guy he sold, bought the cars from him, called him up one day, wanted to buy the cars back. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this had one of those uh, taillights also. That's where you put the gas in one of the taillights. Watch this. Did you ever hear of uh, blinker fluid? This is where you put your blinker fluid in. You, uh... And here's the <laughs> gas cap right here. So they had a clever way to hide the gas caps. This is a beautiful car. That's a beautiful car. So... If you look at some of the things that were built into this car that were like custom car things, look at this chrome trim here, the tail lights that acted as the blinker, all the stainless steel trim, this little flipper here on it's the got door. The skirts. <laughs> skirts, a vent window that you could crank out and so air would uh, come into you but not wind. Uh, the, the aerial, the uh, radio uh, antenna was hidden in this little piece right here. This is a Coupe de Ville. Super car. If I'm not mistaken, this car was off the chassis restoration. So it wasn't cheap. That's my favorite so far. That's a lot of people's favorites, yes. <laughs> yes, it is a beautiful oh, vehicle. So here's a lot of people's favorites too. Today's sponsor is Consumer Cellular. They've reached out to us because they, they dig barn finds, but they also dig barn find people like you. They know the money that you save each month on your cellular plan, you could invest in your barn find. New wheels, tires, rebuild that motor. It's a no-brainer. So to save money for your next project car, check out the link in the description below. Camaro, Cal induction. Yeah, my sister Regina got a lot of good ones. What did you let her get away with that? For? <laughs> 
So this is the last on the road, 0809. So it's got a, let's see what the mileage is on this thing. 40, 41,000 miles. Yeah, here's the problem with storing cars in a non-heated, cooled environment. Look at all that, that moss back there, mold on the seats, that's a shame. That's from a car getting cold in the winter and warm in the summer, and those, those two temperatures uh, kind of form their own environment inside here. Now, I know what that is just because I see the hubcap, 57 Bel Air. This is um, original, all original. Really? Whoa, two-door hardtop, very rare, wow. So this has got that little flipper up here too. It was kind of a General Motors thing. Spectacular. 2001, 22 years has been off the road. So it's got three in the column, three on the tree. That's my problem. <laughs> it's got the stick. So look at this car, red, red and black interior. Just, man, the door panels, red and black, beautiful. Let's see. So this says 2,400 miles. So I don't think that's, that can't be original, I don't think. So, you know, they say that the best anti-theft device you can have these days is get a manual transmission because no young person can drive them. <clears throat> if you want to complicate that one more, get a column shifter because <clears throat> forget it. Nobody knows how to do that. So this might be my favorite now. Yeah, this one's mine. I was thinking. This is keep, yours? Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about keeping it for my son, but. Yeah, so this, this, is, this is kind of an IQ test for him. The, with the it shift doesn't on the come column. any better than that. That's my, that's my opinion. So the, the, the V8 in this thing, the optional engine for over the six cylinder would be a 283. First year of the 283, the 56 and 55 Chevys had 265s. Okay, so it's a 283. Look at that little tiny mass cylinder. And it's a four barrel. So I think that was called a power pack. Yeah, this is really, really nice. And you think it's the original paint? From what I was told, it was supposed to be original because uh, the last time I had somebody in here, they were like, I think this is the, all the original and you're killing it. Yeah, guys. see Because that. it's yeah. not, a lot of the cars are like that because dad's intention was to Tony ran the plumbing and everything. It was to have the heating. If you see, all the wires are set up for the heating and he's got all the AC units up there and it was supposed to be heated and all cooled. heated and cooled. So, so it was going to be okay. This was a, uh, yeah, you see the pipes coming out of the wall? Radiant heat, yeah. yeah. So is that water. water in there? There's nothing in there right now. But it would be water? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Look at that chrome, man, it's fabulous. And that was our job as kids. <laughs> so not necessarily this car, but as kids, our chores were to actually do the chrome bumpers and fenders on whatever cars he had in the driveway. Yeah. And I mean, he inspected. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. More like a punishment, but you know. Yeah, I'm impressed. All right, was this the name of his business? Yes, yes. Wow. So truck number three. Yeah. Did he actually use this truck? Yes, absolutely. He used it up until, uh, my gosh, I don't even know the tags will probably say. I think it was maybe the 80s. Um, the, actually, I have somebody, his grandpa owned this truck and sold it to my dad, and oh, he's wow. interested in buying it back. So this is all hand-lettered. This is back before computer-generated vinyl stickers. Somebody actually went in there, painted little flowers, vine, little building. And this is before you put area codes. There, it was Twilight. 201 back in the day, right? Uh, no, it was uh, Twilight. TW. It was 891, is is the telephone number. But, but I they mean, used before to say that, Twilight. 20, oh, it was uh, 212. 212. 212. 212. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 201 yep, 212. Was in Jersey. Yeah. So he actually drove it. Exactly. Yes, and that was his. He would use that later on. I don't know what he did earlier because I was too young. But this was like his sprayer truck. So he would use it as a sprayer. 38,000 miles. You know, that could be original. That could be original. Yeah, paint. this is definitely original. Jeez. So this was, uh, this has been off the road for quite a while. So I graduated high school in 72. 
This is two years after I graduated high school. So we're coming up on 50 years. It's been off the road. That was the last tag. Yeah. He's been dragging these all over. <laughs> this is an original car to me. I mean, this, to me, this has never been painted. The interior is original. I think it's going to be low mileage. Let's see. 38,000 miles. So I, I'm saying that's original mileage. It's, it's like a 50 or a 51. Let's see. 1950. Your 1950 Chevrolet. I'd say that's an original car. That's a rare one. All right, so try this with your late model Kia or even a Ford Mustang. Not that I don't love them, but you know, here's, here's just a Chevy. Okay, this is not a Cadillac, just a Chevy. Solid. Solid. And this is a low priced car. Mm -hmm. So this has to have a six cylinder in it because it's, unless it was a hot rod, no. all they, uh, these cars only came with six cylinders. But it was an overhead valve, and it was big during... six, isn't it? Yeah, big yeah. six. Is that probably a two fifteen or two sixteen or something like that, with a one barrel carburetor? It wasn't until fifty five that Chevrolet had a V eight. But this engine is basically was is from the from the twenties. They had an overhead valve six cylinder decades before Ford did because they had Ford used L head engines. So here's the old Texaco oil change sticker. Uh, the last oil change, 1975. So I think you're you're ready for one, Kim. Oh, you think? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll wait another another 50 years. This, uh, okay, I know what this is. This would be a uh, Monte Carlo. Yes. Yeah, these are pretty nice cars. I I had one. I was worked at Charlotte Motor Speedway, and I had one as a pace car. Yeah, they're pretty fast. Yeah. You know, I'm seeing that the signs of mold when it gets cold and hot and cold and That's hot, what's you know? happening. It's not temperature regulated in here, so we haven't, you know, and... So this is an SS. You know, it was like, a, I think, a 305 cubic inch, something like that. Nice car. If you remember, this is the notchback, and then later on they came out with the Aero Coupe, which is a for NASCAR, really. Oh, yeah, Johnny Cash, Charlie Rich, Roy Clark. Charlie Daniels Band, Top Country. So, you know, for those of you, the Beach Boys, all right, Surfing USA. That came out of my El Dorado. <laughs> These are called eight track tape decks, uh, eight track tapes. Hey, if you like what you're watching, do me a favor, go check out the Haggerty Drivers Club. 24-7 roadside assistance with flatbed towing, subscription to our award-winning magazine, and more. Sign up today. Link's right down here in the description. Okay, I'm gonna skip this Cadillac. I'm gonna go to this 50, I'm gonna tell you. It's a 1960 Chevy. So fully decked out. Two-door hardtop black, pretty, Impala. It's got the extended rear bumper, very rare, <clears throat> with a Continental kit, spare tire in the back. It's got a three on the, three on the tree. So just a stock motor, 283, the only V8 you could, well, no, I'm sorry, the smaller V8 you could get this year. So the coupe was grandpa's. Yeah, this one was grandpa's. This is the one Tony got chased. <laughs> <laughs> this used to be in my dad's garage crazy. as a kid. No, because we, we lived in a small block and they used to park this car in the street. So we used to jump on the spend. <laughs> Slide down it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like a little park. So you, you got chased off this car because yeah. he got it all nice and clean. He was proud of it. Don't touch my car. Don't touch my car and don't touch my pickup truck. And this is Kim's. <laughs> yeah, this one's mine. So what's number 43 mean? Uh, I think that was car? number 43 on the list. There was about, I want to say 70 or 80. So you, you still have them or some No, of them? little by little, you know. Mm -hmm. And then some of them were upstate New York and we sold the property and they went with, you oh, know, the okay. property. What was LaSalle? Was it a lower it? price Cadillac? At that time, I think LaSalle was more. So this has been your family for how long, Kim? Do you have any idea? It was it her grandfather's car. Born so new? my dad was born in 37. Tony's talking about when my father was maybe 14. That's when he bought this car? So, yeah, my grandpa. 37, 47. So 47, maybe. 51. They bought in 51? I would say, because my grandfather never bought anything brand new. So. <laughs> this car looked brand new when they it, had I'm it. I'm sure it did. 
and this was in my Boy, garage in Brooklyn for years. And this was our play. We used to go in the back, bucket seats. We never saw that as kids. Uh -huh. So we used to actually go in there and just sit and hang out and play. And yeah, a so, lot of good memories. So this one lasts on the road again in 74. And when he pulled it in here, this was all in good shape. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. you know, the temperature and everything just sitting and, yeah, it's really doing a number, I know. So if there's a, like a, a winter car in this garage as far as notoriety or whatever, this is probably it. Huh? This is a, another LaSalle. Who's is this? Oh, this is yours? Yes. Yes, oh, this, this is in. So I don't know what year that is, but this is different in that this hood opens up this way, that hood opens on the side. So this is probably a 40 or so. Also a flathead V8. I believe a 39, and I think that one was supposed to be a 37. I oh, could that be could wrong. Be, yeah. So there's a cool body plaque. It says Cadillac Motor Car Division, General Motors Corporation, Detroit, Michigan, and it's got all the, the cool. Uh, uh, codes on there so you could tell probably the, the original paint color name body style so this is how you open the hood like so you can see okay the subtle differences these headlights are kind of separate from the body these are kind of built into the body so you have subtle differences there this has got grills on the side and that doesn't. So this has got the main grill, the vertical grill, and the, it's got two side grills. And I imagine it's because probably these cars ran hot and it needed additional cooling, so they made these vents. Uh, these are accessory driving lights, but you know what makes this car special is that there's a human being inside there. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> I that, love these doors. This is a four-door convertible. I mean, how many four-door convertibles have, have you seen in your life? Not many. Suicide doors. Suicide doors. I love in the back. these. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so I your sisters did okay, but you did pretty okay too. You, you think? Yeah, I think so. But so, this definitely this, this is cool in that we have a 57 Chevy Tudor hardtop, custom, chopped roof, lowered, and we have a 57 Chevy Tudor hardtop stock over there. So maybe you guys can blend those two roofs to show the difference. But I'd say this was chopped probably at least three inches. And chopping a top is so hard to get all the angles right. You got to chop the glass on the windshield. How do you chop glass? You know, but this is nosed and decked, which means all the glue, all this trim was removed from this thing. It's got Buick headlights. It's got uh, the grill might be probably custom made. And it probably, again, still has a 57 Chevy. Uh, so it's got a, probably a 327 with uh, three two-barrel carburetors, air-conditioned, totally custom. So you would have seen this in a custom car show probably in the early to mid-60s, you know. And he did have these in car shows, and he, I think the first one he put it in, they wanted to give him first place, and he didn't get it because he didn't have a fire extinguisher. Isn't that something? So he was all twisted over that, but then he, he did win several shows with this one. So, you know, this is when pinstriping, you know, people could do it freehand. We looked at the truck over there, hand lettered well that probably the same kind of person would pinstripe this and they were able to make symmetrical lines with freehand and little brushes called daggers okay now we're down to the last few on the side then we have to hit the ones in the middle Oldsmobile. 59 Oldsmobile well we didn't, people don't even make cars anymore now they make SUVs but look at the size of this and the attention to detail this chrome trim the fender goes all the way across the top next to this trim this is like sculpture Designers actually designed all this stuff. This had a back window, not a pillar here. It's kind of a, almost looks like a, another windshield in the back. Two-tone paint, bronze and ivory. And really, I, I don't know if you can get the uh, camera in there, but the, the dash is unbelievable. The, the chrome on the dash, the steering wheel is, you know, it's gotta be inset by 10 inches. And you'll see that it's got a, a device that turned high beams and low beams on and off. We think that's a new thing. We had it back in the 50s. Uh, horizontal um, speedometer, straight across. Think about a 59 Cadillac. Think about, you know, the, the big fins it had. Well, this is an Oldsmobile. This is one step down from a Cadillac and it had equally kind of outrageous 
fins, maybe even more so. That's a beautiful car. See, I'm not a four-door guy. <laughs> I'm not even an Oldsmobile guy, but that's a heck of a car. Is a 64 and a half or 65 Mustang. Yeah, 289. Uh, and we could tell right here, C-Code. So C-Code was a, uh, a V8 car, but I think, I think it had a two-barrel carburetor. This has got air. I don't know if it's factory or not, but it sure looked like factory inside. So that one, the first one we saw when we walked in the door, so this is a 396, and it says on here it's a 68 Chevelle two-door. 396 is an SS, I'm not sure. Uh, could be, because it got bucket seats or whatever. Oh yeah, holy mackerel. Yeah, wow. What does it say, Lizard Racing. So who knows if that's a 396, 427, 454. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think it's a 454. Now, if I'm saying things wrong on this video, don't get on me. I'm not really a big block Chevy guy. So here we have a, a, a Buick convertible. So I'm guessing 62 maybe. You would know better than me. Nice black paint job, convertible top, red interior, pretty exceptional car. So, you know, you don't ever see these. I mean, you know, 60, I'm guessing 61, 62 Buick. Um, you never see these on the, uh, on the show circuit or anything. But there weren't many made and weren't, aren't many around. But it carried forth, you know, this porthole tradition that Buick had, which that car back here may have portholes as well. Let's see. Nope, nope, not on here. We've been walking around this car, you know, the whole time we've been here. I've, I've been eager to pull the cover off this. So this is a Buick convertible. 48, you think? I think it's a 48 Roadmaster. I believe the paperwork is inside, Tom, and it'll tell you the history. 48 Buick Roadmaster convertible model 76C, and tells all the codes, paint codes, trim codes, blah, 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 blah. Uh, oh, it tells who restored it, who did the engine work, the upholstery work, stainless steel, replayed, wow. So it's a little biography of the car. And it has, these have huge straight eight engines. So it's got an eight cylinder, but it's not in the V form. There, there you go. go. Wow. Oh, look at that. Wow, the whole hood comes Ooh. off. Wow. It's like brand new. <laughs> it is. Yeah, don't drop that hood. <laughs> I know. Wait, put how it you, on the other side. How do you, how do you change the stick oil? It on the, stick it on the LaSalle. Like, how do, you, how do you check the oil? This is a big deal. <gasps> wow. Huh. Wow. I'm surprised. <laughs> wow. So, you know, you have a couple of really exceptional things. This being one, the LaSalle being another. This really world-class cars. You know, if you've been following this program long enough, if we come across a collection like this, usually the engine's over there, the body's at the body shop, everything's disassembled, and everything needs a lot of work that will never get done. All these cars seem to be ready to drive. I mean, as, as I told Kim a hundred times, I wish I had a sponge here. I'd like to wash these things, vacuum them, you know, armor all the tires. And I think within, you know, a few hours, these cars could be made like showpieces. Yes, right? I agree. But, what, what was it about these cars that attracted your dad to them? You know, he just, he absolutely loved cars. That was his, his passion. So whenever he got a car, he always found out the history, the original person, where it came from, yada, yada. And he remembered everything till the day he died. He had a very, very sharp memory. So he could tell you a lot more, unfortunately, about all of them than I can. But they were his passion. So even though they've been sitting for a little while, uh, we want to make sure that they do go to good homes. Like we don't want some kid that's just going to take it out and bang it up. We want somebody, they meant something to him. So we kind of want to. He hated farm cars. Yeah, he wasn't. He hated farm cars. <laughs> Never a Toyota. We weren't allowed to have anything. Oh, he bought my sister's first foreign car was a Saab and it was from a customer and he, he cringed that he did that. But we were not allowed to have anything foreign. I still, to this day, have never bought a Toyota or, or a, a Hyundai or anything, nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were a Chevy family, even though they're probably made more in Mexico now than they are in the US, but we have that instilled in our, in our heads. He was still so, headed to Kirsten, me. Yeah. Really? 
Yeah. Why? What do you drive? I got the Mercedes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got, an, 80, I got yeah. an 89 <laughs> 600. Oh, very nice. So, you know, I tell you time and time again when we do these programs, you know, keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, and how one car 75 miles from here led us to this. Uh, a pretty amazing discovery. So, Kim. Thanks so much. Oh, I want to give you a hug. This was amazing. <laughs> what an amazing morning. And I'm it's not going to hug you, Tony. No, no, hug I'm me. <laughs> My wife will get jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks, and thanks for uh, you know kind of being yeah. the, you, her father's you know car expert to guide us through some. I'm of these not cars. an expert. You just he ruined me. He ruined you. He yeah. ruined me with these cars. <laughs> <laughs> he started Tony getting into all the cars. <laughs> you know, somehow I have a feeling if we had some pasta here and red wine, we could. Be it would be quite, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Are you kidding? Listen, Give me the wine. Happy hunting.